be doing this for the next two weeks, uh, three weeks actually. So tonight will be session number one, and then we'll move along uh, session two and three as we're just going to share on Song of Songs. And um, before I get into that, I also just wanted to remind you guys of our uh, the book uh, that we published last year. It's called Three Thevers. And um, it's about this, um, a revelation of God's design for finishing strong. And my heart around writing this was just, it's, it's a little bit about our personal journey and just our quest in the Lord to say, Lord, how do I finish my race well? You know, how do I do this thing called life, ministry, calling, uh, you know, whatever that looks like for you. Maybe you're a businessman, maybe you're a teacher, maybe you're a, a stay-at-home mom, doesn't really matter. Or maybe you're a student that's starting on this journey of life. But how do I do life in a way that is pleasing unto the Lord, where I keep myself on track and where I stay committed, stay steadfast until the end? Now, the end is still very far away for me. But this was a journey that I just asked the Lord and said, Lord, would you show me how, how to do this? And, and in the book, Three Thevers, the Lord kind of gave me a bit of a blueprint of three areas of life that needs to be in place uh, if I want to stay strong on this journey and run with it uh, the way the Lord would, would like us to. And hopefully that we can stand before Him one day and hear those awesome words, well done, good and faithful servant. You know, and I, I know that's the cry of, of our hearts. And I know that's where every single one of us as a believer wants to be. Um, again, I'm just going to give you a minute or so. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not the greatest with technology, so I'm just trying to see where I can see you guys commenting. But uh, like I said, I'll probably get that in a minute. But I wanted to um, also just, all right, maybe I've got it there. So, um, but I want us to start off with prayer tonight and just kind of just give this time to the Lord. Um, also, if you are not able to watch now, we're going to leave it on. You're going to be able to stream it and watch it from, from whenever and wherever. And like I said, hopefully it's something that really stirs your heart. Um, before I pray for us, what happened is, I think it was actually the 19th. Yeah, I wrote it in my Bible. The 19th of July, a friend of ours from, she's a, 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 a very farmers, and she sent a message through to us because we said to her, man, this, this season is so peculiar to us, to be quite honest. There's so much going on. Yet it's, it's super hard to, to, for us to really find out what is it that God is doing. We almost feel like we're in this place where we're just waiting on the Lord. And, and that's a great thing, but it's almost like there's nothing new coming in this season. You know, we're kind of going like, like Lord, where are you? What's happening right now? And um, honestly, that was really hard for us. And she came and she said she, she prayed for us and she just felt Song of Songs chapter 2. That, that that was what, what the Lord gave to us. And this literally from July up to now, this has kind of become like a just a go-to chapter, go-to verses for us. And it's become this prophetic decree almost over our lives where we go, I, I really see what the Lord is doing in this season and in this hour. And it has brought us great comfort. And through it, it's kind of settled us a little bit. I think the beauty of the prophetic is that when God speaks, you know, it's times and seasons and His Word comes and it just solidifies. It gives us direction and it shows us what He's doing in this hour. And that's my hope for tonight, that, that what we're going to share is going to really help you guys to just maybe see a little bit better what, what it is that the Lord is doing right now, uh, what He's busy doing in His bride. And, and honestly, what I see when I start looking around and speaking to different people, that everybody's going through this change. It's like an interesting season that the body of Christ is in. But the Lord is so, so in it. So hopefully tonight's going to open that up to you guys a little bit more. So let's just pray together uh, as we just uh, set our hearts on the Lord. And I want you guys to just settle as much as you can. Just quiet down in your inner man. Just turn your affections towards Jesus. As we just say, Lord, we, we welcome you. We welcome your presence. We welcome your glory, Lord. Lord Jesus, we love you so much. We love your destiny. We love your plans over our lives. But more than that, we just love knowing your heart, seeing your face, understanding the rhythm of what you are doing, Lord. And this is the desire of our hearts, even in this, Lord, that we will capture something of your heart in this hour and that our hearts will be awakened, that our hearts will be stirred with faith, stirred with passion as we set our gaze upon you with the, the cry in our hearts that we long to understand 
We long to see, we long to know what it is that you're going with us in this hour. So Lord Jesus, please come and speak to us tonight in the name of Jesus. So guys, if you're, uh, if you're able, I want you to open your Bibles in uh, Song of Songs chapter, uh, chapter 2. And we're going to read together from, uh, from, verse, from verse 10 to verse 15. And um, I'm using the Passion Translation because firstly, if you've read Song of Songs, um, it's quite a, it's, it's not the easiest thing to, to understand and to see and, and to always get what it is that the Lord is saying in it. You know, it's such an interesting, such an interesting chapter, uh, such an interesting uh, word, such an interesting way of, you know, where, where God is kind of speaking to us in such, you know, just different ways and it's, and it's, uh, it's hard to capture the language, the poetic language, the prophetic language that's in there. But I think the Passion Translation has done such an excellent job, Ryan Simmons, has done such an excellent job in really opening this up to us and giving us a little bit of better understanding, especially a guy like me that needs understanding. The Passion Translation has just been so dear and powerful uh, in that sense. And I'm going to read from verse 10. And again, what, what Brian Simmons has done and I know some people disagree with the translation. Honestly, uh, it has blessed me so much, and I don't think it's the only translation you should read, but it, it is absolutely brilliant, and it really does stir passion in your heart for the Lord. But Song of Songs chapter 2, um, when you read it, I, you know, we've got to see the, the, the relationship between Jesus and the bride, which is us. So it's Jesus pursuing the bride, it's the bride pursuing Jesus, and it's this dance, it's this romance, it's the divine romance, it's the greatest story ever told, right? And it's taking place, and Solomon captures this um, and puts it down as this po pro prophetic, poetic language that speaks about this deep, intense relationship between us and between our bridegroom, Jesus Christ. And it is so powerful and, and so encouraging. And um, I want to read it from you, and, and I want you to hear, uh, as it starts in verse 10, it says, The one I love calls to me. So firstly, this is Jesus speaking to us, speaking to his bride. And he's going, listen, I am calling towards you. And isn't that just already, when I think about it, that already excites my heart. The fact that our Lord um, is calling us, he's speaking to us, he's, he's about to speak to us. Because I don't know about you, but when he doesn't speak, that's when we get nervous, right? And that when he's silent, that's, that's when our hearts get a little bit uncomfortable in where is the Lord? What is he doing in this season? Where is he going in this hour? And we need to comfort ourselves in the fact that he is speaking, that he's actually calling to us in this hour. And it starts out with these amazing words. It says, Arise, my dearest. Um, Again, keep listening. I'm sorry about that, guys. I'm going to sit on now and then we can carry on without me being nervous about stuff going off. All right, so there we go. It says, um, Arise, my dearest. Hurry, my darling. Come away with me. And that's kind of the entry point. When I read these verses, this was kind of the thing that just hit me about this season. And, and I, if you've been listening to any of our teachings, if you've been around us, any like this has been the cry of our hearts. The message of our hearts for, for the last couple of years has just been this deep cry in the Lord towards intimacy with Him. And He's calling us and He's saying, Arise, my dear, we're speaking to you and me. Hurry, my darling, come away with me. That's the invitation of the hour. It's always available, but I want to tell you that this is what the Lord has been doing in the last couple of months and that He's still doing in this time. Is He is calling us away to Him to come away with Him, to step into this different realm of intimacy with Him that is not about doing, but it's about just being with God. The next line, it says, I have come, as you have asked, to draw you to my heart and lead you out. Honestly, when I read those words on that day, I have come, as you have asked, to draw you to my heart and lead you out, it's like I just started weeping. It was like this dagger in the heart where I just felt like the Lord going, like, you have been crying out to me all this time. You've been longing to be with me. You've been longing to be near. And finally I've come. And it's almost like, I don't know, it's like almost this inability 
to read the season and to be okay with the Lord just calling us away to Him, calling us to Himself, and, and just the willingness to almost rest that He has actually done exactly what we've asked for. He has come. We have asked for intimacy. We have asked to be close to God. We have asked to be near to Him. This, is, this has been the cry of our hearts. And finally, He has come. I have come, as you have asked, to draw you to my heart and to lead you out. You know, we, it, it's like, I don't, I don't know about you, but it's been the, the cry of my heart is like, I want to see you. I want to know you. I want to know what you smell like. I want to know what your heartbeat is like. I want to know, I, I want to know what your thoughts are. I want to see your face. You know, we've been singing songs about only Jesus. Nothing else matters. Jesus only. Jesus is the desire of our hearts. You know, just one moment with Him is, 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 you know, is more than enough. So we've been singing, we've been declaring these things over our lives, longing for it in worship, longing for it in prayer. And finally, He has come to lead us into this season. And it was like, for me, I almost felt like, my goodness, I missed it. This, you know, I was like, I missed it. Because in the back of my mind, I still... I'm still looking for activity to justify a part of this, this longing that we have in our hearts to be active and busy in the kingdom, which is a good thing. Don't get me wrong. It's right. It's right to do things for the Lord. It's right to be out there. And, and trust me, I'm, I'm going to be out there again. But it was the season where God shut things down around us and He pulled us into this place and it was a place of visitation it was a place of romance with God where he said, I'm, where Jesus was saying, listen, I've actually heard your cry and I've pulled you away. I, I'm calling you away. And somehow, we, so many people struggle with that season, understanding that it actually is the heart of the Lord to draw us away. Out of the busyness of life, out of the normal that we've always done, even though it was really good stuff, but it's Jesus himself saying, listen, I am doing what you cried out for, so I'm pulling you away. And when I read it, I almost felt like I needed to repent, like I needed to go, oh Lord, you know, like I've been so restless in the season and yet the Lord is so gracious in responding to the cry of my heart. And I felt like I want to keep on being busy, keep on doing something where the Lord is going, I'm actually giving you 100% what you asked, you know. And I felt so, I don't know how to describe it, but I almost felt like I failed the Lord in a way or I missed His heart in the sense of Him wanting a relationship with me in, in this hour like He's never had before. And even feeling like, man, I've been praying for this and now he's doing it. And now I'm uneasy in what he's doing in this season. And I want to encourage you guys because I feel many of us have gone through that. Many people have kind of been in that place where it's been like he's, he's silenced things around us. The busyness has kind of fizzled out a little bit. And we saw that as a sign of maybe something's wrong. Maybe we're missing something. Maybe we're doing something wrong. And I actually believe that it was the Lord that was drawing us to His heart that actually responded to our prayer, that actually responded to our cry. And it was Him saying, listen, I'm here. I, I want to be with you. I want to spend time with you. You know, we yearn for something and He responded. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> That's a beautiful thought. But actually what we've been crying out for, that He is doing it. He's actually coming. He's literally at the door of our hearts and he's going, I'm here. Would you come away with me, right? Would you go on this journey with me into a place of revelation, a place of intimacy, of the deep knowledge of the Lord? And that's kind of the beauty of this hour, right? And unless we can settle in that and have peace in that, we're going to miss the joy of the season. Because we feel like we need to do something, we need to be something, and that is not the heart of the Lord for us. The Lord is interested 
Uh, I said it the other day, the Lord is interested in who we are supposed to become for the season that is ahead of us, much more than what we're going to do. Does that make sense? It's like we want Him to say, you're going to do A, B, and C, and that's awesome. But I believe God is actually more interested in the person that we are supposed to become, the expression of Christ that we're supposed to become in the hour that's ahead of us. And that's what he's busy working in our hearts. And he can only do that with people that he hears the cry, that will arise, that will hurry. And I want to say that words again, hurry. Because I don't know how long this season is going to be. It's going to come to an end. And I don't want to miss the time, the hour of my visitation, right? We want to be ready and we want to go away with him. He says, after that, he says, for now is the time, my beautiful one. Man, it is such a significant time in the kingdom. And I really hope that we, we can all see that, that this is a crucial time in the kingdom of God. This is a crucial time in our walk with the Lord because He is truly setting us up for greatness. Honestly, He is. He is setting us up for greater glory. And we cannot be misled in this hour and thinking that walking with Him in the cool of the day is a waste of time. No, it is the A plan with God is walking with Him in the cool of the day because that's where He can speak his mysteries into our hearts that's where he can release his counsel over us that's where he's going to give you the keys of how to have dominion how to reign on the earth how to subdue it to be fruitful how to multiply right and this is the hour where god is whispering into adam and into the bride and saying this is what i want you to be guys it's an incredible time now is the time my beautiful one the next words and, and this is so encouraging he says the season has changed. The bondage of your barren winter has ended. And the season of hiding is over and gone. Oh my gosh. It is the biggest transition that he's speaking about, right? He's inviting us to come away with him. And he's saying that the season has changed. And this is such a declaration of our hearts. Because we're going, what in the world's going on? No, we know what's going on. This season is changing. Things are shifting. The season of our barrenness, our bondage, the winter has changed. The season of being hidden away, it is coming to an end. And God is saying to us, listen, this is at the door, bride of Christ. This is on the door. I, is Christ is at the door and he's knocking and he's going, this is happening. This is real right now. We need to move on this, right? And it is such an encouragement to our hearts to know that the Lord is in this thing. And this season is changing. And I want to declare it over you. Like I said, this is a prophetic decree that the season over our lives, it is changing. It is definitely changing. There is no doubt about it. And because it, it's got nothing to do with the natural. It's got to do with a supernatural timing in God where things are shifting because he's setting us up for the greater glory. There is time to be made up that was lost right in the past. But he's going to accelerate that time in this season. But it's going to start with those who goes away with him. And that says yes to the call in that sense. Because barrenness is coming to an end. Hiding, uh, hiding is over. Man, so many were in hiding. So many were hidden away by the Lord, by the way. You know, there's that scripture in Isaiah, I can't remember which chapter, where it speaks of the arrows that's in the quiver of the Lord and how he polishes them and it becomes the choice arrows of the Lord. That was the kind of hiding that we were in. He is busy sharpening the bride to hit the mark in more and greater accuracy than ever before. And he's ready to launch people like never before. But it is those who are patient enough in the hiding and when he removes us out of hiding, boy, oh boy, it's going to be for his glory. And it's going to be such a glorious ride that's ahead of us, right? So I want you guys to feel that, feel the intensity of the Lord as he's speaking this over his bride. He says, he says, the budding, the early signs, um, sorry, I just need to find it here. He says, hiding is over and gone. The rains have soaked the earth and left it bright with blossoming flowers. Isn't that glorious? The idea that, that the field is soaked in the Holy Spirit, right? It's, it's Deuteronomy 6. We are going to walk into cities. We are going to walk into homes. We're going to walk into lands that we didn't plow, that we didn't plant, that we didn't build, that we didn't work for. 
and there's an inheritance that's going to be released in the season because he's preparing it it's a promised land it's a kingdom reality that we're stepping into and it is glorious and the holy spirit has been working in the background setting things up fixing things preparing things so that we can walk into them and it's going to be phenomenal this season right and he's declaring it over us he says the rains have soaked the earth and left it bright with blossoming flowers that should be encouragement to the intercessors out there right that should be encouragement to the prayer warriors out there that the land is soaked soaked and it will it is bright with the blossoming flower it says the season for singing and pruning the vines has arrived it's such a powerful thought the season for singing has arrived that means there is a joyful song that's going to rise up out of our inner man and it's going to be glorious it's the sound of hope it's also the season of pruning and i believe that speaks of us being pruned which is less comfortable less pleasant but absolutely necessary right but also that there is a pruning coming in the body in general and it's going to beautify the bride it is positioning the bride it is positioning the vineyard of the lord to explode in this hour with the base wine with the base oil and it's going to be glorious right he's setting us up um he says the season of singing and pruning has arrived i hear the cooing of doves in our land and and this is such a powerful idea because when he starts speaking about this uh, in verse 12 he says i hear the cooing of doves in our land filling the air with songs to awaken you and guide you forth and when you read the notes on this the doves the turtle dove would start singing that would be a sign that the harvest is ready that would be a sign that it's harvest time and it's this song of the turtle dove that is awakening us right now it is the song of the spirit awakening us right now and telling us listen the harvest is ready and when i speak of harvest i speak of souls to be one definitely but i also speak of sowing and reaping i speak of what has been labored for in prayer what has been laid where we've laid down our lives in certain areas where we've labored in the area of praying for healing for deliverance for raising the dead whatever it could be this is also part of it that the turtle dove is releasing the sound saying and there is a shift in the atmosphere and that the harvest is ready man i'm so excited when i see that and even as i'm speaking i feel like prophetically just saying over you guys like i literally see some of you how the harvest um where it absolutely was not right where, where the field you, i can see the seed that's being planted i can see it go but suddenly the harvest is ready and there's multitude of blessing multitude of favor and this is specifically what i want to say a multitude the manifold wisdom of god right that's what scripture says that's about to be released in this hour it is a supernatural wisdom a supernatural strategic ability that god is about to download as the turtle dove as the sound of the dove is echoing because i see how some of you have been laboring in prayer saying lord give me the strategy make me strategic in the kingdom and i feel like the turtle dove the sound the harvest is about a strategic season that's about to open up in the lord i see people coming around you i see growth i see um stuff just exploding where it didn't want to get traction in the past and suddenly it's starting to get traction because the lord is on the season and the turtle dove which is also for me the sound of the spirit is being released in the atmosphere saying that the harvest is ready it is a time to move it is a time to move forward it is a time to be aggressive in the things of the lord so guys we really need to open our ears in the spirit and just say lord i'm, I'm ready to listen i'm ready to receive and i'm not going to be caught up in this reality right um verse 13 and 14 is super powerful and this is what it says uh, i want to jump into that i just want to take a, a little bit of time on these two verses um boy I, yeah i really feel the lord as i'm speaking on this and i i hope it's the same for you i really feel such a sense of destiny when we're talking about this stuff and just such a sense of his pleasure uh, on this so I, I really want you guys to just allow this thing to just soak 
uh, soak on you a little bit. Let it just sit on you a little bit as you just wait upon the Lord in this. Um, but listen to verse 13 and 14. It says, Can you not discern this new day of destiny breaking forth around you? I want us to let those words just sink in a little bit. And it's like Jesus looking at us going, Can you not discern this new day of destiny breaking forth around you? Isn't it a phenomenal thought? And it's almost like, We've got to silence ourselves just a little bit, quiet ourselves down in the Lord and just go, Lord, sorry for missing it maybe and for not reading what you're doing, but can you not discern what he's doing? Can you not discern the new day of destiny breaking forth around you? Friends, it's a season where our discernment needs to rise up and where we need to go, Lord, I'm seeing what you're doing, even though I don't understand it, even though I don't have a full picture of it, right? I don't have a, a perfect glimpse of what the future holds, but I can discern that there's a new day of destiny upon us. There's a new day of destiny upon the bride. And it's important that we discern it. He's asking the question of us, right? Can you not discern? He's wanting us to discern. He's wanting us to see that this is real. This is happening now. Right? This is a reality that's happening right now. And we need to discern that there's a new day of destiny upon us. Man, that excites me. There's a new door that's about to open up. There's, some, there's new things that is opening up in front of our lives in the season. And many have gone through the pruning. Many have gone through the fire. Many have gone through the tasting. And I'm telling you, it was all to produce that refined goal that will stand, right? That is durable, that's going to endure to the end. And God is about to launch us out into His destiny. And when I say a new day of destiny, I don't, it's not always about moving city or country or changing the ministry or whatever. It might even just be in what you are doing that there's a fresh breath coming upon it that's going to empower this thing and it's going to allow you to see things that you've never seen before a level of authority, a level of breakthrough that we've never seen before. And this is so encouraging, guys. Can we not see it? We've got to see it. It says, the early signs of my purpose and plans are bursting forth. Isn't that glorious? It's like it's, it's opening up. It, and, and there's signs. There's like these little sprouts, these little buds, these little figs that are ripening. And it's the sign that his plans are bursting forth right now. Isn't that phenomenal the idea that this is happening in this very hour that he is bursting forth over us and it is absolutely glorious right these plans are exploding and we just need to wake up and see it and not be distracted and just know that the lord is with us the lord is on us the lord is doing something and even in what feels like quiet or confusion or uncertainty to us He's not unsure about anything. Like he has seen this, he's feeling it, and he's excited. Uh, the next line, it says, The budding vines of new life are now blooming everywhere. The fragrance of their flower whispers. There's change in the air. Isn't that glorious? Change is in the air. And we need to feel it. We need to see it. We need to love it. We need to embrace it. Some of us struggle with change, especially... especially and I want to say this specifically, if, if you had a pretty strong idea of what the path is supposed to look like in the Lord, and, and when I say that, I don't even mean that in a negative or a critical way. I just mean that you, we, you had a vision from the Lord, you saw it in a certain way, and that thing was pretty much set in front of you, right? And... What's happening now is that the Lord is changing this thing up and He's saying that change is in the air. And it is so glorious, but sometimes it is hard for us to see change if we had a very specific idea about where this thing is going to go, right? And now we feel conflicted on the inside because we're going, well, you know, we were sure this is the direction, but now the Lord is, is doing something so, so different. So what do we do with that, right? And this should be encouragement to our hearts that, that change is okay. Like the fact that things might not be the way that we thought they're gonna be, it's okay. It's in the heart of the Lord. 
And we, we should just silence ourselves and follow the path of peace. Follow the path of peace and we will find the direction of the Lord. And that is such an exciting, glorious thing for us to follow. But change is in the air and we should not be afraid of that reality. It says, he says again, he says, Arise, my love, my beautiful companion, and run with me to the higher place. Now, can I just pause here for a moment, right? So everything that has been said up to now in these couple of verses, verse 11, 12, 13, it is phenomenal verses. And it starts with a cry from God saying, come away with me. Like he's pulling us away. Arise, hurry away with me. Then, then he starts speaking about destiny. Isn't it beautiful? He's releasing destiny, the new plans, the new purposes. You know, can't you see it? Can't you discern it? The field is ready. The flowers are blooming. It's like, it feels like everything is exploding on the level of action or a ministry field or, or a destiny moment. I mean, if that makes sense to you guys, everything is exploding in that area, right? And it's almost like the inside of us, we just want to jump up and say, you know, where can I sign up to start doing stuff, right? Because this is glorious. Everything is ready. Everything is about to move. You know, let's get to it. And then he goes and, and he says again, arise, my love, my beautiful companion, and run with me to the higher place. When I read it, it just blew my mind once again, just the way that Jesus thinks that is so different than the way we want to perceive, right? Because we feel like, let's go into the field right now, right? We feel like, let's go, let's make the changes, let's, let's move. And he goes, no, I'm putting you away to a higher place. Isn't that phenomenal, right? How we see the promises and the fullness of time that he's releasing. And we see it as this call to action. And when I mean action, I mean, you know, we're going to do stuff right now. And he goes, no, I'm calling you to a higher place again. It's like, can you see everything that's happening around you? Can you see how glorious it is? I'm opening up so many doors. It is wild, right? It's like Jesus is just blessing us. He's putting the spread in front of us, this table set for a king. And he goes, I don't want you to eat that. I'm calling you to the higher place. <laughs> and the higher place is intimacy, right? It's, it's Revelation chapter 2, verse 4 and 5, when he speaks to the Ephesian church and he says to them, you guys are awesome. You're amazing. But I have one thing against you, that you have neglected your first love. And then in verse 5, he says, how you have fallen from the high place. Isn't that a frightening idea? Like we, you know, we can get caught up in the manifestation of the promise so much that we forget that there is still a higher place. And this is what I want to say. The higher place <laughs> is, not, is not the miracles. The higher place is not the church growth, the higher place is not the bigger platform or the bigger business or the bigger breakthrough. All of those things are awesome. But the higher place is Jesus. It's intimacy. It's being a friend of Jesus. And the crazy thing is that he's willing to set the table with all those glorious things that is important. And we're going to do those things. I can't wait for it. It's going to be so good. But he's going... And it's still not the greatest thing. The greatest thing is to come away with me. It's the high place of first love. And it's this reminder to each one of us that let us not get caught up in the massive blessing, the massive release that he gives us and somehow get pulled away from the greatest calling that is over our lives and that is to come away to live on the high place of Jesus Christ our bridegroom our king our lord our savior our brother and learn the knowledge of our father as the holy spirit guides us and keeps us in this high place it is still the ultimate call of his heart 
Everything is ready. Everything is soaked. Everything is prepared. It is glorious. We're going to step into it, but not yet. He's still longing for a different season with us. And here's the reality. Jesus is much more interested in the internal transformation of every individual's life than what is going to happen externally. Because he knows if internal transformation, eternal, internal transformation takes place inside of you and me, that externally things are going to flow and those rivers of living water is just going to flow all out of us and it's going to soak the land around us and it's going to be awesome and it's going to be glorious and it's going to be a blessing to many. But he is still much more interested in the high place right now. He's much more interested that we will be desperate for him. He's prepping everything in the background. He's setting things up to step into it. And again, I, you know, I, I think, I don't think we understand the level of inheritance that is about to be released over the body of Christ. The more I pray about it, the more I think about it, it's like I feel overwhelmed by the goodness of the Lord and what is going to be released into generations in this season. There's inheritances that's coming down spiritually that is going to blow our minds. Things are going to fall in place that we never thought possible and we are going to be absolutely awestruck with what God is doing uh, in this season. And I, I, we need our hearts to be set up in this. We need, uh, we need to be excited about this, but we need to be open-minded. And I'm telling you, unless we discern the new day of destiny, we're going to miss the greater thing that He's about to release in this hour. And we're going to be unsure about it. And we're not going to be ready for what is coming. And we're going to feel that it's not the Lord. We've got to think so open-minded and realize that He's going to put something in front of us that's going to explode and the impact is going to be so glorious for His name's sake in this hour. And that should stir our hearts. Verse 14, right? Are you guys still okay? Verse 14, it says, If this blesses you, just comment or send some prayer hands or something if it's speaking to you as if it's making sense in the season verse 14 it says for you are my dove hidden in the split open rock and that 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 split open rock is such a phenomenal thing because the split open rock was it refers to the side of christ where he was pierced and where the blood and the water came out it speaks about the place of new life, of where the, the bride, <laughs> the, where Eve got birthed out of Adam, out of that rib. And so the bride got birthed out of that stream of life, which is our eternal inheritance in Christ. But also the split open rock, the cleft of the rock, is the place where God hid Moses when he revealed himself to him, when he revealed his glory to Moses, right? And Moses was going through a transition in that period of time. Israel frustrated him, the people rebelled, and God said, I'm going to hide you here. And God was, what did, why did he do that? Because God was about to reveal himself, <laughs> to show him the greatest glory ever in that moment. Guys, he wants to show his glory to you. He wants to show his glory to me. He wants to show... Um, he wants to show himself to us so that we will shine, that we will be lit up for his name's sake, right? That's that split open rock. And he says, it was I who took you and hid you up high in the secret stairway of the sky. It's like we wanted to get our feet dirty on the field and the Lord is saying, but I'm, I'm the one who pulled you up. I'm the one who pulled you into that heavenly realm again. And that when I hear that secret stairway in the sky, I cannot but think of Genesis 28 with Jacob's ladder, which I believe is inside of every believer because of what Christ did. But that ladder that went up and when Jacob woke up from that place, remember he put his head on the rock and he went, surely the Lord is in this place. And he called it Bethel. And then the other words that he said, but surely this is the gateway to heaven. And I feel like, friends, like the Lord is opening up the heavenly flow like never before, like a season of prophetic revelation, a season of dreams and visions. It's like almost a prophetic awakening that's going to come. 
And many of us, we've been prophesying over, but I feel like there is a revelatory thing that's going to open up in this season because He's hiding us in this place. And we absolutely need it. We need this. We need to be prepared by Him for what is to come. He says, let me see. Listen to this. And, and guys, it, like this is the cry of the heart of Jesus, right? Listen to these words. This is Jesus saying, this is what I want. Like, I almost like when I see it, can you see Jesus on his knees going, this is what I want from you in this hour. I'm not asking anything else. I'm asking you for this. And he's not begging because he's needy. He's going and he's saying, this is what you need. I'm asking for this because you need it. What does he say? He says, let me see your radiant face and hear your sweet voice. How beautiful your eyes of worship and lovely your voice in prayer. And it's like he's saying, I need to hear you in this hour. I need to hear your song. I need to see your face. What does that mean? You're looking at him. Just looking at him. Even if we don't have words, we're just looking at him. He says, I want to hear your lovely voice in prayer. If First Thessalonians 5, what is it, verse 20? Be unceasing in prayer. Imagine if our life becomes prayer, so we don't talk internally about stuff. You know that internal conversation that kind of goes nowhere? But everything is a prayer. Everything becomes a topic for prayer. If I think about something, it's prayer, and I start praying over that thing. He wants to hear your sweet voice in prayer, your beautiful voice. He wants to see our face. He wants to hear our worship. He wants us in His presence like never before. And friends, this is glorious. Remember what Jesus did. Think about it. Jesus dies on the cross. Uh, he's raised from the dead, resurrected. He starts appearing to the disciples again. And then He sits down with them. And think about it. He just defeated death, right? The victory has been won. I mean, he's the eternal king, right? You know, he's, he's the eternal king. The battle has been won. It's, it, it is finished. He said it himself, right? Everything is positioned. You know, the 12, the, the 11 is back in position again. He's appeared to the 500. This gospel thing is about to explode, right? And what does Jesus do for 40 days with the disciples? He sits with them and he has an encounter with them for 40 days teaching them the way of the kingdom. <laughs> Isn't that glorious? Everything is ready. And he goes, sit with me for 40 days. This is the way of the kingdom. I'm going to teach you what is to come. I'm going to show you how this thing is going to work. And this model is repeated throughout the history of the gospel, throughout scripture, where he sets things up and then he calls us to himself. And he says, first be with me and then I'm going to launch you out into this thing. And it's going to be glorious. Guys, this transition we're in, it is absolutely powerful. It is absolutely from the Lord. And it's a season to embrace. It's a season to enjoy. And it's not something to fear. It is something to celebrate. And I'm going to stop at verse 14. And next week, I want to carry on with verse 15. And we're probably going to do that for two weeks where, where he speaks about the little foxes, right? And this is such a real topic right now because if we don't manage this part of our walk we're going to miss what it has for us in this season so i think it's super important that we talk about it but my heart was just to come out tonight and say guys if if you're in a similar season i also want you to comment and just say man this makes sense i'm definitely feeling a shift i'm feeling a change i'm feeling a transition it's been a little bit weird it's been uneasy around me but, but something is happening. So my heart with this message is just to stir your faith, to say, listen, the Lord is super busy. He's busy setting us up. He's busy doing things. And man, it's going to be glorious. And hope should be stirred in our hearts and almost a peace about where we're at right now, not feeling that we need to fight, that we need to push back against something, but honestly, that we can rest in what He's doing. And the minute that we go away with Him, the minute that we go to that higher place, something is going to happen on the inside. But you've got to go to a higher place knowing that He's already set up the field. He's already set up the next season. That way, when you go to the higher place, He's going to start filling you with joy. He's going to start filling you with hope. He's going to start filling you with power. 
is going to start filling you with vision. But if you go to the higher place, not believing in his faithfulness that he's already setting up the next season, you're going to go in there with, and you're going to bring confusion with you to the Lord. And you're going to ask for things that he doesn't want to answer right now. Our job is to rest in the mighty hand of the Lord and what he has for us. That's our job. And to rest in his ability to set this thing up because it's his work in any way. It's his kingdom. It's his name. It's for his glory in any way. And we can rest in submitting that to the Lord, yielding it to, over to Him and saying, Lord, I'm not asking about the season. I'm trusting and I'm just going to sit with you and I'm going to pray for your glory to fill me. And I'm going to love the high place with you. I'm going to watch you. You're going to see my face. You're going to hear my voice. You're going to hear my prayers. And I'm going to let go of the feeling that I need to be in control of what is coming. Because trust me, we are not in control. And the less we know, I'm sorry to say that because this is really hard for me as well, but I believe the less we know, the better. Because it is going to blow our minds what he's going to do. And I think we're going to mess it up if we know too much. What we need to know is to keep our hearts pure, to keep our devotion pure, to keep our times of intimacy with God as uncluttered, undistracted as we possibly can. So guys, I want to bless you with this tonight. And I want to pray for you guys um, just about this season. And also, I, if you want to share this with people, please do that. And also remember next week, Tuesday, 7 o'clock, we're going to carry on a little bit just to share on the foxes. Because again, I think it's so important that we address these things. But let's just close our eyes for a minute. So Lord, we, we just cry out to you. <laughs> you are so good, Jesus. You are so good to us. Your mercies are incredible. We love you so much. Your glory is the desire of our hearts. Your presence is the desire of our hearts, Lord. And we want to be near you. We want to be with you. We want to know you. We want to understand the season. And Lord, thank you that you are setting a glorious table. Thank you that you are preparing homes, cities, fields that we didn't build, that we didn't prepare. You are opening up wells, cisterns for us that we didn't dig. That there is fresh water, fresh provision, fresh vision waiting for us, Lord. And all you want is for us to possess the higher place of intimacy with you. Lord, thank you that you've heard our cry. Thank you that you heard when we said we want to know you and that you drew near and that this is that very hour and season. So Jesus, we embrace you. We embrace intimacy with you. We embrace your glory. We embrace your hand and we embrace this hour. Thank you that we can live in it with so much peace and with so much joy, knowing that you are 100% in control and that you are so busy in our lives. So Lord, I bless every person that's listening. I pray that that ladder will open up and this prophetic flow will explode like never before. And Lord, that the joy of fellowship will be so overwhelming, Lord, that we would truly just rest in that so much and be filled with glorious expectation. So I bless you in the name of Jesus. I thank you for your mercy, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So guys, thank you so much for this time together. Uh, I feel stirred up. I feel excited. And man, I can't wait to see what he's going to do. And I can't wait to see what he's going to unlock and unfold for us for next week. So bless you and see you guys next week, Tuesday, 7 o'clock, here again. God bless. Bye-bye.